Hey everybody, this is Kat. That's Kat with a K of catfurrow.com. Winston and I are in here having a lot of fun. He really just wants the treats. That's all he's about is the treats. And he's been spoiled. I've been out of school since um, the end of May. And Lord, this dog is spoiled now. Just spoiled. Has way too many treats. Way, way, way too many treats. But without further ado, and let me move this lovely little thing out of my way, which is that logo thing. Let me hide it. Awesome. So there's my face. And I, again, am cat of catfurrow.com. And I'm going to shift it to comments. I already saw Deb has a comment out there. Thanks so much, Deb, for joining us. Thank you for sending me pictures, too, of your project that you have going on. I appreciate it. And look, Nicole's in the house. Let's do this. And Winston, hi, Winston. I miss your perfect face. Winston's face is dirty. I just gave him a bath, and he just has been playing in the yard with me too much. He's dirty. Dirty dog. But um, what are we going to do? We're going to paint a floral vase. And um, I'm going to apologize in advance for... I have voice issues and my voice is acting really weird today. I don't know why. It's kind of odd. It hasn't done what it's been doing today in a long time. So I'm curious about that. But anyway, we are going to paint a floral vase. And um, what I do is I'll take ideas sometimes and put them on paper in an art journal. And then from an art journal page, they go onto a canvas or a substrate or they just they morph. So I want to show how something morphed. And one, I did this painting last night. However, it really started months ago as an art journal page, even. Um, 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 um. I also want to say, Nicole, you had asked me, we were talking about YouTube and comments. And I do see Deb is watching from YouTube and she has commented. So we have the question answered. That question is, can you comment on YouTube and me see in real time? And the answer is yes, I can. Awesome. But anyway, I want to um, just show you this real quick. So this is what we're doing today. And it's in um, it's on a mixed media page, paper. And I do paint with very little water. But mixed media paper handles water better. But I do not recommend water with it. I would use a watercolor paper if I were introducing a lot of water, and I do not. <clears throat> so this is what we're going to do. We're going to replicate it, or I'm going to paint it on um, a wood panel. So you could replicate it, go through the same process on paper, canvas, material, a wood panel, whatever your little heart desires at any size. Because I'm going to break down how I'm kind of, I'm not going to give necessarily numbers or measurement, but what I am going to show you is um, just how I design it. So if you're shifting to a smaller size or a larger scale, you can do go through the same process and come out with a similar result. But what I want to share first is that the concept of this page was actually done months ago. Months, months, months. I did it about 11 o'clock at night, literally in my bed, and this was it. It was done with markers. So I first started out with a purple pastel pencil. <clears throat> from the purple pastel pencil. I introduced inks and markers and just played and played. There's actually no real paint on this one as far as acrylic paint. And from here, I liked it so much that I drew another one, if you can see, in ink. And this one, I just did the concept of it based on the first one. And from this one, I then traced it to tissue paper. So the, all this heavy line that's in here means I've traced, I've used this page a lot. So when I initially trace it, it'll have a real thin line, but I've utilized the same tissue paper multiple times so then the line gets darker so it was traced and then that became whoop, okay. 
trace to here. So this is now my reference that I can always use and I scan it and then make that available. And then I've painted it in different forms. So you can take the concept of an art journal page that's done late at night sometime or whatever time you do art journaling. I happen to do mine often late at night. <clears throat> you could like something or all of the concept and <clears throat> use tissue paper or whatever you need to to replicate it. <clears throat> Sorry for my voice. Holy moly. So that same concept, I just did an eyeball version of this one. So when I say an eyeball version, I looked at my drawing, I eyeballed this drawing, drew something on here, and then painted it. So we're going to end with the same colors that I've been painting with other than the American flag. So the same colors. So now I'm going to shift my camera and hello world. Did I say how grateful I am y'all are here? Thank you so much. That's my head. It is beautiful here in Carlsbad. I'm so excited that the weather is sunshiny. Okay. I don't, I went ahead and put this together with pencil. So normally I don't practice the use of a graphite pencil when I paint and play as far as um, these go, as far as the tutorials go. And the reason I don't is people like to erase. And not that I'm opposed to erasing because I do use and utilize an eraser, both figuratively and re realistically. <laughs> um, but when I'm working with people that aren't accustomed to drawing and aren't accustomed to painting, then I really try and shy them away from the use of anything that you can really um, fixate on erasing your mark. I like to own the concept of owning your mark. Because even when you apply a graphite mark to any substrate, the line, you actually make an indentation in the paper. So the mark is still there. And I like to just use it as a thing in life. Like you, you put a mark on something, you own your mark. So you never mark unless you mean it. So any mark, even the wrong mark, is the right mark and you own it. So I try and share that with people with colored pencil. And what's cool about colored pencil is they're water soluble. So you can kind of make it go away. You can introduce water to it and move it. Um, and purple, I have a, both a purple and a violet, work well for me with paint. Here where I mussied up this, um, where I have the graphite in there, it grays. And if you're using lighter color or more translucent or transparent colors, it can really muddy um, that color and I don't like that. But for this exchange, I chose to use graphite for people and what I did on the original is this part, this mark of the vase, the bottom of the vase, is just about center. It's just a little left of center. And then I do a curvature line. I like curves. So on both sides. And this down here at the base is about, it's about three inches across. And then I do a curve right here. So if I want this in pencil, then I'm going to come down or a color pencil. I'm using the side of the pencil and then a line and a mark. It can be very loose. We're going to paint over it. So your mark, as far as a specific perfect line doesn't have to be. And then this center flower is the best, the most, most important focal point of it. So I start here in the, about an inch above the top of the base and make a little square and just keep squaring off. And in the center, initially, it's very tight. I'm looking at comments in case I'm guessing that I have volume. So I haven't seen a comment that says, no, I can't hear you. So I'm assuming, yes, I can hear you. Awesome. So I'm just going to keep going round in square marks, kind of. And they're not perfectly square. They're probably more like rectangles. There's a few triangles in here. The point is, what's the point? The point is no circles. So I'm using straight lines. And here at the base, 
because I'm wanting that flower to cup down some. It's a very tight line. Here at the top, it's open, wider lines. That's going to help me create the idea of this flower kind of looking down a bit, right? So here, I'm going to have this flower more to my, to its, my left. So I'm widening to my left the petal, but here towards center, it's a little more tight. Some people like to just make a simple mark, circle, shape, one, circle, shape, to um, place their design. I like a lot of lines. Um, I like a lot of lines because when I start painting and introducing paint to this, it helps me build in highlights and shadows right out of the gate. Kind of gives me a roadmap, and I like maps for a lot of reasons. And speaking of maps, there's more than one way to get to New York City, so there's more than one way to paint this painting. This just happens to be the way I'm choosing to paint it today. I could paint it differently tomorrow, but for right now, this moment, that's how I'm choosing to paint it. This flower is more to the top left, and it's more squared on top, so I'll even draw like a rectangle right here, just to give that idea. And kind of three-dimensionalize that rectangle-ish, triangle-ish thing, cube, if whatever you want to call it. Not even a cube, just funky shape. But I'm showing that this top center is here, and I'm bringing in a really tight center. And as I come away from that center, and I'm coming down is what ends up happening. Those lines are kind of tight down the pyramid, if you will. And as I get lower to the base, then I can open up those petals. Yeah, man. And then they're wide. So here I'm gonna do the same thing, a little bigger. Only it's really tight on this side. And here on the inward side, it's broad, wider, whatever term you want. There, I like the wood panel because I can put a lot of weight and pressure on it. I'm pretty heavy handed. So I'm gonna add another one over here just because. And then let's see, there's maybe a leaf in here and maybe a leaf over here. These are ideas, <clears throat> pardon me. And that's all I'm gonna do for this. I want to say that that same idea I can use the same thought process. So a little over halfway mark. I can make a mark. I can make a mark. Put a sexy curve line. Sexy curve line. Cross it off at the bottom. Create a little hook. Say I'm going to have a center flower here. And when I'm working, I'm working Pretty much like this. I want one over here, one here, one up here. And the point is, is no matter the size, the scale, whatever it is you're working on, you can make it work from the same art journal page. I'm going to set this aside because I'm not going to do one large painting and one small painting today. Not today. That was just for point. And I won't let that fall on my head. Hopefully. Back to the ranch. So what I like, so when I'm doing an art journal page, I want to identify what I like. So when I like the colors, but I also, I wasn't sure about this background color. I did share this with someone and they said they liked it. So I'm going forward with it. But as far as design goes, I took and I just created a square on this rectangular page. And this guy up here and this that's outside the line is actually a mis quote mistake, a happy accident for me. 
that my paint just went outside the barrier or the line that I created and the look of it, I like. I like how it just kind of went out of the box, which is life. We sometimes go outside the lines. I like going outside the lines. So I just chose when I, I'm replicating it here to introduce that concept to this page. If you're painting on paper, it'll go fast. I'm painting on wood because it'll also go faster for me as far as dry. The surface is rather porous, porous, even though I've used gesso on it. If you're working on a canvas, you may need to go a little slower. You may need to use less paint because the canvas is not porous. And let's see, of the paints that I noted, I'm going to start out with the, um, the magenta and a large, a large flat brush. And I'm going to outline around the piece. I'm going to stay within the square line. Hopefully I'm really a bam bam. I would not make a good mechanical person. Well, I have been a mechanical person, but I really struggle with straight lines. There's probably a reason for that. I can make a lot of jokes. So what I'm doing is I'm going to cover the background um, with the flat brush. I'm not concerned with um, the brush mark. I do apologize. I am using gold in here. My magenta is a quinacridone magenta. I'm out of the Liquitex. Normally when I do these classes, I, I note an economical paint so people feel more included. But I normally paint with golden and um, I've graduated, that's what I like to say, with golden and then a local company north of me and I'm out of the Liquitex and I'm watching my comments if you have comments please feel free I am trying to pay attention so again I'm using the magenta and I'm going all the way around the base I'm staying within the squared line so I am trying to stay within the boundaries Trying to be pretty clean about it. So the background white is gesso. It is not paint. So if I come outside of my boundary, my line, my squared rectangular line that I put in here, I did put a squared line in. After it dries, I can come in and make it pretty again. So here in between flowers, I'm kind of trying to put some of that magenta. If you saw my or watched the videos from my other classes, I identified a light medium and a dark space. I'm not doing that with this piece. Hopefully this goes really fast. So that is just the straight magenta. Magenta is a transparent, it's not completely translucent, but it's transparent. Meaning I can see through it to a degree. I am gonna let this dry and move on. But while I have this paint in my brush, I want to come here to the top of the vase and just tap that in. I don't like to waste paint. And I'm going to drag some down. So the other I want to say right out loud is I am not trying to mirror. I am not trying to mirror the exam at all. So the example that I painted is an art journal page. It's a concept. So I like the concept. I like the use of the colors. I liked that I 
chose to go with magenta first on the background and then the color that I bring on top of that and so forth, I'm going to show you. So with the art journal page, I was exploring and some of the things I liked. And so I'm going for it on a real substrate. If there's something in the process that I didn't like, then I would not replicate it. I would take notes, write that down, yada, yada. I'm, I do have a vessel of water, but I'm not going to put my brushes in the water very often, if at all, during the process. And I'm using a paper towel to pull most of that color out. And I am going to try and get this done really fast. Um, I had someone say, can you slow down? And the answer is, yes, I can, but no, I'm not going to. I'm really, I'm really trying to achieve a fast pa um, painting so I don't think. Because if I start thinking about it, then I'm going to like fuss. And it's really what I'm trying to demonstrate to people is to be fearless and to just go for it. You can always come back and paint over something. Um, if you're playing and you're doing the paint along and... Don't set yourself up for a failure if you're not familiar with painting or you're not used to painting this fast. Then the chances of you succeeding at the same rate I am is not a reasonable expectation. So pace yourself. You're, you can pause and stop and go back. Right? So I'm going to grab some paints gray. And I will work on making myself... A bench. Note to self. I'm going to work on that so I can show you my palette. But paint's gray and some more of that magenta is what I'm going to work with. Just a little tiny spidge. And when I say a little bit, a little bit. I'm going to pick up my a small flat brush. I think I noted the number four. I'm going to bring these two guys together here. And it makes a pretty purplish color. Use the corner and come in and try and touch some of those purple lines that we created. I don't care if I hit them in their entirety. Some of it will be darker than others. I'm using a dry brush. So the bristles are not soft. So, um, using only the corner of the brush to create dark. Down here, remember at the bottom would be the darkest. So I know that going in. So I'm purposefully grabbing some more of the paint, more paints gray than the magenta and bringing in here at the bottom. I'm letting it kind of bleed into this magenta that we used at the bottom. That makes us a nice color. And I'll even pull some of that in just for line. And I'm using both the corner now of the brush and the full width of the brush bristles. And I do have curvy lines this time, not as straight. So I know that and I'm, making some curved lines on the outside. Coming back, now the full knife edge. At the top, although there is going to be shadow from these guys that are sitting on top of the flower head, so to speak, I always think of them as people and think that center guy just really is getting crushed. Um, I still, although it's dark, I make it a little lighter than the bottom. So that's the full width now of the bristles with some magenta. So you can create that look and it gives you some really cool marks and shape um, without white paint. And that's two colors we've used. We use the magenta and the paints gray only. And then, of course, I had my fabulous purple pastel in there. Here on the left, I'm going to try and keep this girl on this side lighter. 
So I want more magenta than the Payne's Gray. On this guy, I want it a little darker. So I'm going in with more the Payne's Gray than the magenta. Be mindful of that edge. <clears throat> and what else? Put some darker line in here because there's some shadow mark in there between these guys. I'll put some darker line in here too. So I call it darker lines. I call it shadow lines. You know, other people are going to call it, which is the proper term. There are proper terms, your low lights. And I just, when I was learning, I struggled with um, keeping up because I didn't know terminology. So one, I recommend learning terminology, but I um, purposely do not introduce a lot of terms when I teach so that everybody feels comfortable and not less than. That's my goal. But if I use a term and somebody asks, I need to watch the comments, um, and I use a silly term sometimes, scrunching is one of them, rather than scruffing, I scrunch sometimes. I'll define what my silliness is all about. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this little bit of paint left, maybe. Maybe, maybe. So that's two colors, that's magenta and the paint's gray. And I did apologize, that is gold and magenta. That's the quinacridone magenta because I'm out of my Liquitex. I am gonna grab um, the orange. I don't have my glasses on. Here's my glasses. I forget which camera I'm on, which camera I'm not. Ah, Vivid Red Orange by Liquitex. So I haven't rinsed my brush. I did pull a lot of the color out and I'm gonna come over here on top of this orange. I mean, on top of the magenta with the orange. And I just, I want to cover it, but I need to be careful because with that Payne's gray, well, the, the orange and the magenta alone can get real muddy and can make a nice brown. And I don't want it to just turn brown. I want, some of that orange to come through. So I now set that dirty brush. I pulled color out, set it aside just in case. And I now have a clean brush. It too is a dry brush. And I'm just gonna come in here and put some orange mark. So I was chatting with a young lady about color. And I always talk about if you don't know your colors. What I mean by that is if you don't understand the colors you're using and what colors they make when they touch each other, when they come together, whether they're layered, whether they're opaque, meaning you can't see through them. Sorry, Winston's barking at something. Or rather they're trans parent where you can see through them and then just what kind of co color combination what happens when you meet when you marry magenta and this orange and not all colors are the same it's really so you need to play with them so i am really terrible 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 about not color swatching color swatching is a formal way of experimenting with your paints and documenting it so I will use my art journal pages similar to this with new colors and start playing. I'll write the color down. I take notes. It's what the colors do. And then that becomes my reference and that's how I learn. So I do want to bring some of that orange in here too, right on my left, maybe a little on my right. And we will have maybe the idea of some stems. So let's pull some 
linear lines down just because. And pull the orange out of your bristles. I'm gonna grab some more magenta. I really, although I listed all of those colors, I'm not going to use all of them, I think. And I listed all of them just to be consistent with the colors that I use normally. And because I'm working from an art journaling perspective, I can put, it leaves me room to pull anything, which means it leaves you room to pull anything. So what I did pick up was the magenta and I picked up um, fluorescent pink. I'm not going to use fluorescent pink yet. And I will grab some white because I want this to go fast. So by my scale or by my clock, I have 29 minutes to make this happen. So I'm really going to try and create something out of it. Do, do, do. I hope everybody's having a great day. Deb saying, and you make it look so easy. It is easy, Deb. It's not easy. I practice a lot. But here's what I want to do while that's drawing. So I don't believe in um, I don't believe in a lot of things. Here, let's move that. One of the things I don't believe in is uh, New Year's resolutions. I'm going to do something, I just do it. With the exception of art or my art process. Let's see, what do I want? What do I want? So once a year, at the beginning of the year, I commit to myself on learning something different in, uh, in art. In one year, when I chose to um, on my mark, which means I couldn't erase, I picked up a pen and said, I'm going to only use a pen to um, make any kind of mark. So I've made marks with inks on large scale and created bison. I've created zebras. I've created elephants. And I do that with pen first. So my, what I learned in that process, one, is how an ink pen works and how I can cover it and create shadowing and shading and all kinds of things with an ink pen. But what I also learned is like, I lost fear and I learned that I can come in and I can paint over this. So in that, Deb, to your comment on easy, I ended up drawing a lot of flower. Everything that I do, everything that I used to draw in pencil, I now make marks in ink. And I do that by practice. So where it seems easy now, it's only because I've spent a lot of hours, many, a lot of hours. So back to the ranch, we'll paint. So if I always carry an art journal page or an art journal with me and a pen, my favorite pens, so that I can draw on the fly. I, I'm like a child. I need entertainment. Okay, so I picked up some white and some magenta. And where my white, I'm starting the center with my focal point. I want this flower to succeed. The others. I'm not so thrilled with. I don't care about them as much. What I really want to matter is my focal point. And of course I care about the other flowers, but I really want the center one to be the star. And where I already have the white line, that is my light, light colors, if you will, or the highlight areas. So I'm gonna try and really come in here and just kiss on those white marks a little bit. If, and because we waited, we had a pause in there, the paint is relatively dry. If yours is too wet and you keep moving your brush on it, 
you're going to see that all the paint comes together and it makes its own solid color. We don't want that to happen. So one, pause in between, let your paints get relatively dry. And two, these are not, in, these are impressionistic flowers, very loose. Um, so we're not going for realism. Let that be. So I'm going to pull the paint now out of this one. And I think I want this guy to be a little more magenta. So I'm literally only picking up magenta on my brush now. And for the sake of, I'm going to come up here. Same color. So the others I blended and I used multiple layers. I'm really trying to reduce the number of colors that we mix at the same time. Um, people asked and because some people were more challenged than others. I'm going with less is more. And we're going to layer some other colors in here, but I'm just layering the safe colors first. Up here, I'm just going to go with some white. There is magenta in my brush, so you will see the white skew move. It's not necessarily white. It's more pink. Somebody, let's see, Deb saying, and you get right with it. Da, 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 da. Yes, practice. And I don't go for perfect. If I'm ever perfect, oh my God, I think you just die. No perfection, not for this cat. That would be boring. Okay. These guys I'm going to play. I'm going to bring in some blue. So I am going to bring in yellow also. The problem with blue and yellow, right? Blue works. Blue and the magenta and the purple, which is, we'll just go with the paints gray. They're all very similar on the color wheel. They're, they're not very far apart. You start adding yellow to it and it introduces green. It can really shift your color. So the yellow I'm going to save for a minute. But what I will say is be mindful of your brush. Be mindful of your brush. So set one brush aside and it be like your yellow. So this is straight blue and this is the um, phthalo blue. I'm not a blue girl. Blue is not one of my favorite colors, but I have learned to embrace blue because the world has a lot of blue in it. That's a joke between my baby sister and I. So I am, I did put a little guy over here, so I'm going to put some blue spots over here. I'm going to put some blue in here, especially down at the bottom, just a little. This color, too, is transparent. I like the white line that's naturally there, the white background where we don't, where we have not achieved full coverage. That is cool for me right now. Pick up some, I cleaned out a lot of that blue, but I am picking up some white. I want to touch, just barely touch, because you'll lose the, the brightness of that blue we just put in, and I don't want to. So I'm barely kissing. And some blue. While I'm over here, my sing-song voice. 
I'm going to pretend I have a leaf. So I'm literally laying the same bristles down and I'm pulling and twisting at the end. So I'm setting the bristles down, pulling, twisting at the end, give a little curve. Setting the bristles down, pulling, twisting at the end, give a little curve. I'll do it one more time. Set the bristles down, pull towards the end. Whoop. Because we're using a dry brush and the type of brush, it gives all of these lines, which are awesome. It's kind of built in texture and I'll do the same thing over here. Let's make a little guy right there. And do I want any more? That's all I'll do for now. So I'm going to set the blue brush away so I don't pick it up with the yellow. I'm going to grab some yellow. Now yellow and this magenta and stuff can really get muddy, can really mute, can really become a brown, can really make me ugly, all the uglies, all the things. So I'm saying that out loud, out loud, out loud, out loud. And I'm going to pick up a detail brush. I often like, well, I'll take that back. I am going to use a small brush or a flat brush. But um, how can I say this? Just barely touch to start, right? This yellow, I want it to be more pink than yellow. And again, that yellow can turn it to a real strong shift in brown, which is a pretty brown, but I don't, I just don't want all that. I just want some of that yellow mark in there. You can take some of this yellow over here to the left if you want. But just barely put some of that yellow on there, please. And then up here, it's relatively dry. We can kind of go for it a little more. There's more that Payne's gray is dry. We had some white up here that's kind of dry. I'm trying to talk louder and I'm just shifting and making some bright marks. Let's bring some of that yellow in here, maybe some over here. And the center because we would see light through the center of this piece, especially down here towards the bottom. This is a cadmium yellow, so you can see through it also. So it coming in and taking up that white space for me is awesome. So then I get full coverage, but I stay light and bright and airy. The idea of light down here, even though we're using really crazy colors. And you can end up, because we've been painting and this has been drying, you can come over and really put a coat of this yellow over this and it just makes it kind of awesome. I like to have fun, by the way. Okay, while we're letting, I need to put something over here. Let me, da, 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 da. let's just jump in. I'm going to jump in. Jump, jump. So I'm going to jump with fluorescent pink and magenta. So fluorescent pink and magenta. Now the fluorescent pink too can really do some unique, make some unique color shifts. It's not, it surprises people that it's not always just bright and light. It can really like tone down the colors, but just trust me, it, it's there. The fluorescent is there and just leave that bad boy alone. Let's pick up some more of the fluorescent pink real fast and just touch and try if you can, like you create your own little map when you're laying these colors in. So if you can, which you won't entirely because we're using this chunky brush, try to stay in between the yellow lines. You are gonna touch some of the others, the yellow, but try just a little bit. And then put some of that hot pink, which is the light fluorescent pink here on the left and here on the right. Maybe a splash up here. While I'm here with that fluorescent pink, remember I want center stage. So that's pretty. This is the corner of my brush. Up here, I'm going to go full 
width down here, I'm really staying with the knife edge and the corner and being delicate. I'm mindful that my white is still tacky. So I'm staying away from that white. This is literally just getting a, a good bang out of a fluorescent pink. <clears throat> so here the full width and an edge. That was the full width and an edge. I'll leave that alone. I'm gonna come up to this guy. And because of how we layered the different colors and same colors on each flower, except for this one and this one, they all look different. And that's a good learning tool. So how you layer the color in, if you um, mute it down, I am going out of the line. I am mindful of that. I'm doing it on purpose because I liked the look. I said that earlier. Um, the white really introduces a game changer to color. I'm watching my clock. I have 14 minutes. And I'm going to grab some of that white. And here. Beautiful. This is, I already put um, the fluorescent here. Here I'm just taking some of the white. That's my knife edge. It's the knife edge. So this really doesn't require a lot of paint either. And here I just really want to put, let's say that there's going to be a little button of something. I know that I'm going to put something there. That's my mark for that. Here I want to put a mark here. I know I'm going to put something there. So I'm going to remind myself with these little dots. And right here, and how much time? I have 10 minutes, 13 minutes. Okay, with this white. Not sure I like that one. That's okay. And normally I would step back, I would look at everything, and I'm not doing that with this process. This is really about learning. So this is my brush with the white and the blue where it picked up some of the blue here. I'm just going to bring some of that idea of blue into the vessel, into the game, because we've let some of this dry. You can see the individual color. And blue and yellow normally makes green, so when it overlaps, it makes a green. It mutes down here on the bottom, which I like. I'm going to pick up some of the paint gray, touch at the bottom, so we can create kind of a shadow down here. Picking up magenta, I want some more line. Just give the idea of stem. Maybe some orange, that orange and magenta, a pretty brown. And I'm just tapping in. Especially here on the left, it's going to be a little brighter. Drawing my brush down, that knife edge gives it a little more shape. But it keeps a line in here too, which gives that stem power and makes it more of a focal point. I've cleaned most of that orange out of my brush. I need some white. I'm probably not going to finish in an hour. I'm probably going to go a little over, probably because I ran my mouth earlier. So this is just a little white and there is whatever muted color is on my brush. And it looks like there was some Payne's gray there. 
So I like that this is a muted tone. So it kind of contrasts with all this bright that's going on. So here where I said I was going to put in, so I'm just tapping some bright white over that muted color. There's a center area. So same brush. I haven't changed my brush. You don't necessarily need a bunch of different brushes. What you need to do is just play with your marks and a brush and go fast sometimes just because you can so you gain confidence when we're in here like this and rigid then we're picking on ourselves this is a little magenta that's splashed in there and i don't like to pick on myself so i get back here and i just start going for it and whatever it is it is and then you step back and you you assess it you come in and you paint over whatever you need to whatever change you need and right now i want to brighten this up i'm coming in with another layer of the magenta a little bit down here A little bit over here. Let's cross them off the bottom. So yesterday is so funny. I have been busy in school, so I haven't done the things that I normally do. And one of those things I really like to be organized my closets, my dressers, my all the things. And in the last nine months, I have not maintained my normal habits. So yesterday I started this project of cleaning my closet. And I said, I'm not going to paint. I'm not allowed to paint. Put myself in time out until I was finished, which means I couldn't put anything together for class. It's kind of funny until last night because I finished my task. I did it. So I'm letting that dry and I get picked up some white. And let's see, let's touch in just a little white over here. Let's give that a little mouth. I like to think these ladies, as far as their singing, I really love local music. Always think of Catherine Beeks, Mockingbird Art, beautiful songwriters and singers. So many of them. So I'm just touching with the edge corner. I'm trying to like highlight a few petals, not too much. I don't want to think about it. I think about it I'll think wrong huge life lesson picked up some white remember I'm trying to like bring this little guy down a little bit so I don't want to think about it too much but there we go may I jack that up I can't tell Now some pink, which is the fluorescent pink. By drawing it in where we draw in in the beginning and your lines, it just tells your brain that's what you're going to do. Even though you can't see those lines, you went through a process to start. Your brain remembers that process. You remember that process. So when your brush comes on, it's no longer really a brush. You don't think of it as a brush. It's just like your pencil or that marker you used earlier. You become more in confidence with your brush. So I'm lightening this up on my left. Let's bring some of that white over here. Cool. Almost done. Almost blue. I see Jane is in here. Hello, Yolanda. I see you, beautiful. Yes, ma'am. I need to come paint in your garage. It's been a minute. Been a minute. Been a few years. So I have yellow. I have blue. I picked up my blue brush. I do want to pick up on the corner. Just touch in. Normally I mix the colors and do all kinds of things, but for this, I'm just leaving it with the colors that I'm identifying. I'm not worried about the mixing as they layer on top of each other. 
because of the type of paint, their translucency, it gives the idea of mixture anyway. And then it's a little more safe for people. So that one's staying blue. I don't want to touch some blue over here. Oops, maybe too much. So pull the blue off my brush. If I can't remedy my oops, I'll come paint over. Let's see. With that blue and some green coming over, marking over those blue lines. So that blue then becomes the under, it comes the shadow, everything has a shadow. We had some dark marks in here, which would have been shadow maybe. So let's put some more darker marks in here. Let's bring a leaf all the way over here. There's some blue on my brush. There's some yellow. Let's really own it. And I want some of that mark here because there would be some sort of shadow going on. And what else? What else? What else? I'm going to pick up some white. Here's where I could really not be happy. And when I say not happy, it would just mean that I could have, my paint could be too wet. So when I layer the color on, I could lose all the other color. I could come in too heavy, but I don't panic because one, I don't panic. Two, this is fun. So why panic when it's fun? Three, <laughs> three, um, let it dry, paint over it, right? Magenta, I'm gonna come in here with some of the, bl it's blue and all the colors that are on that brush. And I'm just touching in here just to show how you can just like, yeah, baby, right? Making use of the color on my brush. I had a show a few Sundays ago and literally the night before I spilled purple paint and it hit six paintings. And I spent the night that evening, two nights before or something like that, fixing those paintings. And I say fixing, but maybe it's just bringing them to the point they were supposed to be. Here's some more orange or some magenta. Take it back, some orange. Take it back, orange. And I want the orange up here. This guy hasn't been touched in a while, so I'm okay with letting it get a little orange over there. Now I'm gonna pick up just a smidge of white and tap it and whatever else was on my brush and tap it in. Water and glass picks up all the color. That's why anything that goes anywhere on this, I'm touching into that vase. So I'm setting that aside, that brush. I have my detail brush out and the paint's gray and magenta. And I wanna come in here and darken a few spots, not too much. I really want to darken is down here. Be careful because my palette is dirty and I touched white. So I'm grabbing Payne's Gray, putting it on a different spot on the palette. Detail brush. Coming in with this darker line underneath. Um, allows contrast. everything would cast shadow down here underneath so I'm just tapping in some darkness it'll help the other things pull up pull off of each other stand out whatever term you want to put on there drop my brush
I do paint like this when I'm by myself. Kind of erratic. Um, so I'm tapping in some of that gray so it blends, mixes a bit. So it's a, um, a more gradual line, it's not a hard line on top of those blues and all that color that I put on here. That's what's happening. And lastly, let's see if I think that brush is clean. I hope that brush is clean. So I have not used any water. I have not, I have not. Picked up some pink. This is the fluorescent. And in just a couple of places. So when you see me pulling my brush through my hand, like my left hand, I have a paper towel that's really gross right now. My hand, when I paint, I'm also a dirty painter. I get paint all over me. I'm messy, some say. Um, but I'm pulling excess paint off of there so then whatever paint I lay down, I can um, play with it a little bit and feel safe. Pick, I'm still playing with the pink. The pink is the star of the show. I don't recall. I did say thank you for everybody that chose to show up today. Thank you. I really want you to pay attention to the pink on top of this orange. We came over here and we kissed some of that orange and magenta on this flower. And this is the fluorescent pink and it makes a fire S. I mean, it's a really cool color and then how it just shifts the dynamic of all these other colors in here it's just really nice and this is a little white Not too much. Side of my brush, just want to take it. Let's give that a little mark. I'm looking at my time. So this is just really some yellow green on top of that. It's a little blue and yellow that's on this brush. I need to be careful over here. I can't get away with that here, but that's okay. This is the left side. It looks like there's more light over here anyway. So I can drag some of that mark of yellow green over here. Um, maybe I don't need that here. Maybe I just want to touch in the corner same brush but I'm just picking up some muted white and Payne's gray off my palette touching in to kind of give it a curve too it gives it a little more dimension it's not just a flat shape across your canvas in my case it's a wood panel and let's put some pinks And some white. I can do too much. That is my struggle. I can overwork something both on the canvas and off the canvas. So here's some yellow and I'm going to really try to call it done. And I, it's a joke around people here about, Katie, you need to smile more. I, when I'm painting, I'm focused. So this is the straight up, just cad yellow. This is tacky. If I apply a lot of pressure, it's going to push it into the yellow. I really don't want um, it to marry. Like I want to see the brightness of this yellow. Knowing that I could use too heavy of a hand, too much pressure, I have a clean paper towel. And stand by. I'm going to touch. OK. 
Okay, I like that. I feel like I'm conducting. So I'm cleaning my brush out each time. Again, this is not an opaque yellow. This is a very translucent guy. I want some kissing up here. And I did do the same thing here that I did in the example. And although I could paint over it for the sake of learning, I'm going to grab my pencil and just own the oops up here and just create the idea of a mark. This is um, a pastel pencil. Normally I would just use paint to do that. And let's see. I'm going to break out the hot pink first, which is fluorescent pink. And that fluorescent pink with that purple, and I'm just tapping it around and kind of thinking flower, right? Be the flower, think the flower, using some of the same idea, mark, lines, straight lines to create that idea up there. Cleaning out the brush, grabbing some white and just touching in. And maybe just to bring them together. Okay, I'm gonna call this done, maybe. Now I am. Okay. Yes. Yes. I really hope. Yes, yes, yes. So thank you for joining me. This is Kat of Cat with a K, catfurrow.com. Really glad for everybody that chose to show up and point and make comments and all the things. I'm going to step back and look at this. That's a little line of magenta that's going on back here. I can already tell I'm going to play with it. And um, I hope people learned. I hope you had um, a good time. Thank you, Deb. I appreciate you. And I look forward to seeing what you guys put together. Feel free, feel free to shoot me an email, shoot me a text, post your results, post whatever, ask your questions. And as a tease, somebody is asking me to really put a class together. And um, I'm really half inclined. And if I do so, it's going to, it'll be a significant, we'll do a complete KDI'sed mixed media layers and paper and all kinds of things. So if you're interested in that, um, it would be more than one day commitment. And it will cost if I do that one. But let me know. Send me messages, all that kind of stuff. And I will let people know probably by the end of this month. We'll see how this month goes. But love and hugs to you.